The second derivative test is really nice and convenient when um, we have a nice second derivative and when it works. Don't believe me? I'm going to show you right now how nice a second derivative test is. We got a full page to do this problem, and we're not going to use very much of it at all. So I'm telling you that we have a critical point when x equals 1 and when x equals 4 for this function. Use the second derivative test to classify these as local max or local mins or neither. So we need to find the second derivative. The second derivative test says just is the function concave down or concave up at that point? That gives us our answer. So let's find that. The first derivative using the power rule is 6x squared minus 30x plus 24. And the second derivative using the power rule again is just 12x minus 30. This second derivative was easy. It was just a polynomial. So we just got to use the power rule twice. Now let's just find out whether we're concave up or concave down at these points. So the second derivative at the first critical point, we just plug in one, we get 12 minus 30, that's negative 18. It's negative, it's concave down. There's our answer. It's a local max. Okay. Similarly, the second derivative at 4, well, that's going to be 12 times 4 minus 30. That's going to be a positive 18. Great. That's positive. Concave up. We know what that point looks like. The end. We should still write our answer, right? So this right here is a local max. This right here is a local min. That's it. Okay. Local max when x equals 1. Local min when x equals 4. And again, it's weird that 18 is the min and negative 18 is the max. But remember, this isn't the function value. These are the derivatives, the second derivative specifically. So we would have to actually use the original function to find the y values. You could check your answer here by graphing it on Desmos, but that's all there is to it. That's all there is to the second derivative test. And again, if we looked at another point, if we got the second derivative was equal to zero, then we would have to say no conclusion. We would have to use the first derivative test. If your second derivative equals zero, you got to use the first derivative test. And you can just give yourself a little sad face. But we're good to go here. Let me know if you have any questions about this.